Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to talk Bulldog Cross Country and with us head coach Jared Kelsch. Coach, first of all, welcome uh, to the show for the first time this year. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Certainly uh, coming off uh, a busy weekend, uh, your, your only home meet of the season and nice to run on your home course at Khaki Golf Course this past weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's always a pleasure to be able to get an early meet in on our home course, um, you know, having the support of the community and um, all their athletics teams there. So um, our kids like it, you know, first one out, just kind of shaking the rust off, um, getting a race in and kind of seeing where we're at fitness wise so that we're able to uh, progress throughout the season. The Ray Helsing uh, Bulldog Invitational, talk about what that means, 43rd uh, annual event, certainly named after a, a guy that had a big impact on Ferris State track and cross country. Yeah, um, you know, Ray Helsing, longtime coach, um, you know, passed away a few years ago, um, so certainly even a bigger bigger honor now that it's named after him, but, um, you know, started the cross country program here, so, um, you know, certainly he had, he had a huge impact on, uh, you know, our, our running programs here at Ferris State, so, um, you know, we take a lot of pride in being able to host a, a meet named after him and, uh, like you said, the, the 40, 43rd one. So um, excited to, you know, always be able to run that in early September. So we go to some of the highlights. Uh, your, your guys got off to a great start. Uh, Minton with four uh, finishes uh, among the top ten overall. Yeah, we had a, a really good day on the men's side. Um, you know, we, we sat a few kids um, just because of early season, but um, Trevor Halawati, first place, uh, senior, uh, had a great summer of training. Um, you know, I think ran one of the faster times on that course probably in the last eight, ten years uh, for the 8K. So um, certainly fit. You know, we had a couple of uh, sophomores and juniors um, kind of round out the top ten. So very excited with, with where they're at for that first one. Um, again, just, just kind of getting things moving and getting an idea of where we're at. And so um, we're excited to, to move into this, this weekend's uh, race. Talk about the course conditions, uh, what it was like running out there at Khaki Golf Course. Yeah, super weather. Uh, you know, as you know, it rained a little bit during the week, so we had a few soggy spots, uh, which, which made it a little tougher in areas, uh, especially for the men K doing the 8K loop. Um, so, you know, we're, we're pretty happy with, with how it went overall. Um, fairly fast for the most part, and, and like I said, it allowed our kids to um, get some good footing and, and be able to compete, especially the second half of that 8K. First competition of the year, uh, certainly nice to, to get out there and run against somebody else uh, rather than the, the training you've been able to do. Yeah, yeah, we always try to keep it a, a fairly low-key meet. You know, we just want to get five, six, seven teams here. Um, again, they're, they're kind of looking to do the same thing, just get one in for the season um, so we can kind of gauge where everybody's at. And then um, that kind of helps us progress the next, you know, six, eight weeks as far as training-wise and uh, what we're looking to accomplish at each individual race as we get uh, further into the season. and you know, go against a little bit higher uh, competition. So, um, yeah, very, very exciting to, to start off the season. And like I said, uh, our, our kids came in a little bit fitter than I think I had expected. So very, very happy with, with where we're at. As we shift over to the women's side, uh, they had a big day as well. Uh, first place and eight among the top ten. Nice to see all, all those women uh, up there so high. Yeah, uh, on our women's side, we have a huge freshman class. Uh, we had eight freshmen come in and two transfers. So, um it was good for them to get out. Typically, we'll do a 6K. Uh, we did a 5K, again, just to kind of help them adjust a little bit more, having such a younger class. Um, Katie Etlemecki, a uh, sophomore, uh, came out and was second place by a few seconds. So, uh, you know, she, hit, she did a fantastic job. And then we had a group, uh, you know, that, that were four or five deep that came in, you know, uh, two through seven, eight. So um, super excited they were able to work together and, um, you know, kind of push each other for that first one. Uh, get an idea of what uh, college racing's like it, as far as uh, season length and, and training, and they've come off a fantastic summer of training and camp week as well. So, what's the biggest adjustment for some of those young kids uh, coming in, uh, running in the college level for the first time? Uh, probably the biggest adjustment is uh, racing less and, and training more. And in high school, you, you typically race quite a bit more. So, um, you know, we, we'll only go six or seven times throughout the season. So we put a little bit more stock and weight behind our training. Um, which means you know we hold a little bit higher volumes for longer periods of time because we're not racing quite as much. So I would say that's probably the biggest adjustment for our younger kids and um, you know just getting their bodies used to that type of training and handling the mileage and um, you know really just focusing on the last couple of meets of the season um, as, as our big competitive meets. As we uh, saw some saw on some of the highlights, some some great weather conditions that they were able to run in on Saturday morning. Yeah, you can't ask for better weather than we had on on Saturday. Uh, like I said, for the most part, the course dried out. Uh, you know, it's 55 degrees and sunny uh, during race time, so that that really worked in our favor. Um, you know, like I said, good competitive fields and 
um, our, our kids took advantage of that and ran very well. So, As you move on, uh, next meet uh, at Michigan State uh, coming up on Friday. Talk about uh, that meet. I know you've uh, had a chance to go to that meet here a number of years. Yeah, Michigan State's always a good one. Um, you know, we see a lot of teams from different divisions from, you know, D1, D2, D3, NAIA unattached. So um, very, very, very competitive. Um, you know, our, our kids always tend to run well there. Um, you know, when you have that many kids in one race, uh, it, it tends to kind of keep you moving along. There's no gaps where you have to work from one group to the next. So uh, you're able to kind of continually push yourself through the whole length of the race. So, um, you know, they, they have a very good course set up as well. So, you know, we're, we're excited to run there, and it'll kind of be our first uh, real big test against competition from all divisions this year. Talk about the, the types of training you do and, and where you do it uh, here in, in terms of cross country. I know I've seen uh, some social media posts out there with the dog park, uh, your kids running down there. Uh, just talk about where, uh, where, you, where are you training for the most part. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all over. Um, you know, we, we try to keep a, a good variety of, of stuff and not be on the pavement all the time. So, you know, we'll go to different parks, uh, you know, through Big Rapids, like you said, down at the dog park. Um, you know, we've, we've been out to the, the horse track at the fairgrounds. Um, it's a good 800 meter loop that's a little bit softer for our kids to get on so um, we try to keep it varied and interesting so we're not doing the same thing every day. Out of the, the meets like Michigan State this weekend, uh, Greater Louisville Classic in a couple weeks, how do those help you prepare you for the conference and the regional championship? Uh, those are going to be really big. Uh, they changed the qualifying standards this year um, and, and so there's some going to be some at-large bids so um, we'll travel to those meets with the hopes of beating some other Division II teams that are not in our region. Um, so that we can get those at uh, large bid points, um, you know. So if if we're a little off on regional day, um, you know, that may play in our favor that we beat a team earlier in the season. Um, and, you know, we may still have that opportunity to get chosen for for the national championship. So um, because of of that different type of qualification system, uh, some of these meets coming up, you know, Michigan State, like you said, Lewis, um, Louisville, um, those are going to be big ones for us to kind of be on our A game and. Um, really looking to be some other Division II teams that are outside our conference and region. Well, Coach, best of luck to the Bulldogs uh, coming up on Friday at Michigan State. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Ferris Sports Update. A reminder, you can follow all the action and get all the results online at ferrisstatebulldogs.com. Have a great week.